Hi everyone, this is Coach D, and I don't think I've ever been more excited about a video than I am today. Look, this is Flag Football Friday, and today I'm gonna give you a treat. I'm gonna give you eight free plays right off my wrist. So if you go to the description right now and you click on the link that says eight free plays, you put your email in, you can download those right now. I want you to do that because this is going to be a training video. That means you're literally going to follow along here, right? And I'm gonna show you not only what they look like here, but how do I take them out onto the field and train my players how to actually execute whatever position they're on, how to execute it onto the field. So we're taking these and we're moving it out here. So go ahead and grab your eight free plays right now. Pause this and do that now. It should take you no time at all. All right, now that you have your free plays in front of you, whether you have ever used some of my plays or not, here is an excellent video to show you how do I look at my plays, teach my players what it looks like out on the field, spacing wise and whatnot. Now what you see here is you see cones. Now what I love to do is I love to put these plays, let's say number one here, I love to take them here and put each position out as a cone on the field. Because what you'll see, whether they're five years old, 17 years old, it doesn't matter, the spacing is sometimes a little bit tricky. They're like, okay, how, how tight do I need to be? Number three is tight formation. Well, how close is that? right? And so I'm going to walk you through exactly why I space certain things out, how do I use each of these plays, etc. And then if you want more plays, you can always go to Flag Football with Coach D, and there are a few options. You can get the full playbook, right? That's kind of a, a starter guide with templates and practice schedules. You can get the age-based, which has every age group broken down, whether it's pre-K to first, second to third, fourth and fifth, right? Six to, to eight. And on each age group, I give you 24 plays, not eight, 24 plays and eight practice schedules. So you can literally just walk out on the field and you have your practice already planned out. Or you can get both of them together in my all-in-one playbook. That is basically everything you need to start coaching and mentoring and, and really making an impact in your community. But let's start with these eight plays. So I'm gonna take this out of my wrist, right? And all of these can be put into a wristband, right? So that on the sideline, you can just call out one, two, three, or five, or eight. And all the players do is they look at their wristband, they get in the formation, right? And it makes it super easy. You don't have to be out there for the huddle. It builds their confidence. They can do hurry up, because they know like, okay, one play after another. Okay, I'm gonna do three, four, five. Boom, let's go ahead and do that, all right? So let me show you how we actually break these down. First of all, I have a number here, okay? That is so that I can call out the individual numbers, right? If I wanna call play one, they know to run the play number one. I have the name of the play, which I'm not too worried about that. As you can see, the first thing I do is I put pass or run, right? If it's gonna be a run, um, then you will see that I'll put run here. Now we have a couple of run pass options that we're gonna go through today. Now a run pass option, very similar to what you saw like Philadelphia do when they won the Super Bowl is, those are called the RPOs, where the running back can either run with the ball, like you hand it off and they can run, or they can decide to pass it down the field. So we'll go through that as well. But I have the name of the play. And then I have the actual plays themselves. Now, 
If you're playing six on six or seven on seven, you can grab my six V six or seven V seven. But most of my plays are going to be five V five, which is NFL flag football. So you see that the orange is with the ball has the center. So that's the center. That's where they, they're going to start the play. And then the quarterback is in yellow, which is right behind them. Okay. And then you see behind that, you see B. Now B is usually going to be a running back and that is green, right? So anytime I see B, that is the running back in green. And when it says BF, that means a fake. So BF means I'm gonna fake handoff to B, right? And then I'll probably pass it because it's a pass play. So I have A out here on the actual line. So we have uh, twins formation over here. So we have two uh, wide receivers that are spread out. <clears throat> and this is to the to the right of the of the quarterback. And then you can see that the route that they're going to be running, it basically just shows the route. So, and then if you see a star, that means that's the person that will likely get the ball. So if it's a pass play, that is where the quarterback looks first, right? That's the primary receiver, but if they're covered, they can go to anyone else. So uh, on this, if I see, let's say BF, that means I'm gonna fake. And then you see a little line, a solid line where the quarterback is going to roll out. <clears throat> so they're gonna roll out to their right. And then the dotted line is where they're going to actually throw it. So they're gonna be throwing it to C. So you can see that, all right? And C is doing a quick slant. A is doing a quick slant and up. You can call it a slant and go, where it's they're doing a slant and then they go up. And again, uh, center is an eligible receiver, so they're doing a quick slant. And you can also see that B will also be an eligible receiver, but they're just doing a fly pattern after they get that fake handoff. Now that you kind of have an idea of how that works, now let me show you how it works out here on the field. All right, so looking at play number one, you can see it very clear. You've got your center here. You've got your quarterback under center. That means that they're right next to each other. All right, so you have your quarterback here, right? And then A is about a yard or two away from the center on the line of scrimmage. And then you have C is about two to three yards away from A. Right, so this is the nice spacing that I like to have. If you wanted to bring it out a little bit more, that would be okay. If you wanted to spread out your, your offense a little bit on that side, that is totally fine, okay? And then I like to have, I like to have my, <clears throat> my running back about five yards away. So even though it looks a little bit closer, I like to have my running back pretty far away so that they can get a full speed, right? Full speed, by the time they grab that ball, they can go full speed. So, let me show you what that looks like. So they're here, right? They're ready to go. They're not like right next to the, the quarterback, right? They're about five yards away. Boom, so this is it. This is how I line it up. And then I have the players line up on the actual cones so they're ready to go. And then we go half speed, right? On ready go, and I look, and this is why wristbands are so effective. As the quarterback, I'm gonna be handing it off, right? I'm gonna be doing a fake handoff on this side, right? So ready, go. I, right? Here, you can see. Boom, and then I'm gonna roll out, as you can see there, and now I'm ready to hit that quick slant. Boom. And I wanna hit that quick slant pretty fast because what's gonna happen is A and C are going to cross like right here, All right? C is gonna do a nice quick, quick slant. A goes first. 
then C, boom, C catches it, gone. And you're not allowed to bump, right? We're not allowed to bump here. So A can't bump the defender, but they're gonna go first. And then boom, they go, and I throw that ball right there. If they're covered, right, I've got a couple different options. I can look to, I'm over here. I can throw it over the top because I've got A doing a cross and then they're going up, right? So if they're open, boom, I could take that big shot down the field or I can do my quick slant, boom, right there. <clears throat> so that is play number one. We run it over and over and over. You do it slow at first, get people comfortable, right? If you want to switch people out, and here's a big deal. I'm going to be the coach. I'm going to tell you what position I want you in. I want to make it very clear when I am <clears throat> instructing or showing these plays, you're not, you're not telling me, oh, I want, to, I want the ball. I want, I want to be C. Uh -uh. None of that. Okay? So you need to have that conversation right up front. Boom. Now let's go to number two. Here we go. All right, number two. You can see that I've got it spread out a little bit more. And again, if you want to push it, I just have to keep it a little bit tighter because of the video. But if you want to spread this out, you absolutely can. If you watch adult or older kids doing flag football, they spread that baby out. So feel free to do that. But I've got it again, locked up. I've got it set out here. So make sure you're looking at your number two. I'll show you how I do it. So I've got about five yards back. I've got B. The first thing that's about to happen is B's gonna fake first, right? So on ready, go. I am going to fake handoff. I'm gonna fake that handoff, right? I'm gonna fake that handoff over to B. B's gonna grab it. And watch this. Here's what B's. Fake handoff, act like they have it. Fake like they give it to A and they're gone. A is doing this. Ready, go. Wait, Whoa. grab. So there's a fake handoff situation. There's a fake handoff situation going on between um, B and A and that's the right so as B fakes grabs it here then they fake it to A so A waits for just a second poof, goes and now it's like an end around so I've got B going this way I've got A coming this way right B going that way A going this way they fake handoff B doesn't even have the ball. <laughs> Guess who has the ball? We got the quarterback here. Fake handoff, hold back here. See this right here? Look at that. I'm a little bigger. See you can, but you you act like you don't even have the ball. Watch this. <coughs> Ready to go? Take it out, gone. Ready to go. Doot, 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 doot. Boom. So you see that C is running an out and up pattern. Right? You see that little, right, going out and then up. So out toward the sideline and then up. That tricks the the defense. So C's just sitting like this. They run straight ahead. I'll try to keep it in the in the video. They run straight ahead. They do an out. And then they cut again. They go up. They're doing basically a fly pattern. Right? So they're doing a fly pattern. So you pop it over the head. Quarterback is like right here. Over the head. Boom. That is number two. All right, for number three, I want to have 
A and B in the center. So A, the center, and B, toe to toe. Toe to toe, meaning like foot to foot, right? A's right foot, the center's left foot, right next to each other. So it looks like this. See how tight this formation is? It's like the Rams this year, keeping everything tight. So I've got everything tight. So if I'm B, I'm like right, my foot is next to basically touching the centers. Everything's tight right here. Then I have my C, my, uh, C is popped out. And feel free to bring them as far out as you want. Ready, go. I slow it down. B is going to actually go in between the center and the quarterback and fake that handoff. B is going to fake the handoff right here. It's so slick. They're grabbing the ball and acting like they get it that way. So, ready, go. As a quarterback, <clears throat> as a quarterback, I'm actually just canning it off. I get it, I get the center, and I give it to B pretty much like that. But this is a fake. So I put it in their Brad basket, right? B grabs it, right? And then I pull it out. This, this is how I do a fake. So I give it to him, fake it. And then that's a quick slant right there. Ready, go. Quick slant. Who's doing the quick slant? C, wherever, wherever they are, right? They're ready to go. And they just take the ball. So they're running, that's a quick slant. Now, no matter if the wide receiver is gonna be doing this, they're cutting in like this, they're gonna do a quick slant, or they're going straight ahead, I want them always lined up, just like this, straight ahead. Ready, go, boom. And they go straight across, and as you can see, C is actually getting the ball, boom. Now, another thing you see on that is that everybody else is going the opposite direction. So that's another thing I like to do with my plays is I like A, center, B, everyone's going this way, right? Taking the defense that way. And then I've got one person going that way that's getting the ball. So as A goes that way, as center goes that way, as ever, it's very important the people who may not get the ball. If it doesn't have a star, they're like, oh, am I not getting the ball? You may get the ball. That's why it's critical for you to do your job. You need to run that route. Boom, go across, right? Take the defender that way. Because now we have one person, one-on-one -on -one over here. And a lot of times when it's a quick slant like that, I could just dump it off, boom, and I'm gone. It just makes it a lot easier. So make sure they're doing their job there. Now, same formation for four. Same formation. I have A here. I have B here. I have C out there. But now, let me introduce you to one of my favorite things, the RPO, run pass option. So when you hand it off behind the line of scrimmage, the running back can do one of two things. They can run, right? Once the ball has been handed off, they can run, obviously. Or they can pass the ball. So if you have A who has somewhat of a fairly good arm, then here's what you could do. <clears throat> Again, when I hand it off, it's gonna be in between the center and the quarterback. So I am handing it off right here. Ready, go. Same thing I've done before. But this time, A grabs it. So A comes in, grabs the ball like this. Ready, go. Right? They're not even going forward at all. A is literally just running this way. Grabs the ball right here. And now has the option to run. Okay? But if they cross the line of scrimmage, they cannot throw it. So make sure they know that if they cross the line, if they go past this line of scrimmage, they have to run. 
But if they get the ball and they see, oh, B is doing this nice out pattern. Watch this. B is just going like this. Boom. They can grab that right there. You know, if somebody's rushing and they're coming in and they're about to get A, they could just dump it right off. So with the run pass option, RPO, which I've got a couple of them on here, you're empowering the, the running back to make that decision. All right, so think about that when you're putting the, whoever A is in that position, you need to make sure that they can throw, right? That they have that confidence. With my other playbooks, my full playbook, with my age-based playbooks, all that, what I do is I give you progressions. So you would have, let's say three, right? So I've got three where I'm faking. Well, right before that, I could have done the same play, but actually handed it off to B. So then I do that one, I hand it off to B, and then I do number three, which is faking it to B, and they think that they have it, right? So you wanna do progressions where <clears throat> you are doing a very similar play over and over. I was watching the, the Rams game last night, and they were talking about that. You're doing the same formation every single time. You're just mixing it up a little bit so that the defense is like, all right, which what, what? Okay, is he gonna hand it off again or is he, right? Jared Goff would literally just have one guy coming around. I think Reynolds was coming around here. Number 11 was coming here, right? <clears throat> and then Brown would just come up the top, boom. And sometimes he'd hand it off. Sometimes he would roll out, right? Do play action don't have to make it complicated, but when you have several plays that are very similar, then you can do progressions. And a progression is basically you keep the same format, the same formation, the same everything, you just switch it up just a little bit. So number three, number four, right? If I did number five, I could actually fake it to A and then pass it to, to C or, right? So that is just that concept. Now let's go to five and let's start some shotgun. All right, so we've got number five laid out here. Uh, shotgun's usually about, let's say five yards, could be three, could be seven, depending on. It's not like a, you have to do it 10 yards away. No, but whatever's comfortable, depending on your age group, depending on how, you know, the blitz is coming, all of that. So I like to do that. Let's start with the quarterback position back here. Now, as you can see, I have B lined up right next to me. Well, what I like to do usually is put hands out and we just do fingertip to fingertip. So B would put their hands out and we are just, the, the spacing really depends on fingertip to fingertip. And there you go. <clears throat> and that's how close they wanna be. And as you can see, the first thing that's gonna happen is I am going to fake handoff to B. So I get the ball, ready, go, boom. Ready, go, it comes to me. And it's basically, B is just gonna go like this, right? Like they're about to do a draw play. And again, progressions, you could actually hand it off to B one play, and then the next one you do this one. Ready to go, fake handoff. And I've got a couple videos on how to do fakes. We covered this before, but now I have A and C are doing quick slants. So what they're doing is they're literally gonna be crossing. And what you need to decide and just tell them right up front is who's going first, right? Otherwise they'll run right into each other. So I'm straight ahead. I know I'm going this way, but I'm lining up straight, right? Lining up straight, ready to go. I go this way, maybe A goes first, right? And then B, or then uh, C is at the same, same time, just right behind them. So that they're crossing right at the same time, right at the same time. And it needs to be full speed. I talked about this on another video. It needs to be full speed, like right away, right away. That's just how it's gotta be. And you're not gonna bump you're not gonna bump the defender, you're just running your route. 
And as long as you don't intentionally try to hit someone or get in their way, you're just fine. But the cross makes the defender kind of who's getting the ball, what's happening with the, the fake back there. Boom. They don't even know what's happening. And then I pop it over to C or to A. Everyone is open. Ready to go. Fake handoff. Throw. Ready to go. Right? And there's not a lot of movement here. I don't want a lot of like skipping around. Ready to go. Fake. Boom. You'll see like, you'll see like Kyler Murray. Any of these that have this stuff down. There's a lot of control here. Ready to go. Boom. And what I'm looking for is which one of these is going to emerge from this cross and be open. Whew. Right? Is this one going to be wide open or is this one going to be wide open? But usually it's one of those. Okay? So again, I see that C, C, C gets the ball, but that does not mean that C has to get the ball every time. It's up to the quarterback to identify who is the open receiver. Okay? Now, let's go for six. All right, six again is gonna be shotgun. We have B on the other side, so we're gonna do finger, right? Fingertips to see the distance, right? So I've got my quarterback here, then I've got B there, I've got A here, right? And then I've got C over there. So what's gonna happen is we've got A. A is gonna cut across just right, look, right behind that center. Almost like they were gonna get that, almost on that tight formation, how they were getting the ball like that. So A is just gonna cut across right here and then just boom, be out here in the flat so that they can grab that ball. Ready, go. Out here, turn, catch the ball out here. You're catching the ball out here. The goal is to have your back to that defender so that the quarterback can throw it right here. Look at this. I come over here, cross the line of scrimmage, and now look, nice target right here. Nice target. Throw it on the run. So the quarterback wants to throw it a little bit ahead of the receiver of A so that they can catch and run with it. So it goes like this. Ready to go. Boom. Now that's hard to see. Let me move this over. Ready to go. Catch the ball. Boom. Going. Now, same thing is happening over here with the quarterback, right? All right, so I've got my spacing. Ready, go. B. B gets that fake handoff right here, right in front. Ready, go. Like this. Boom. So it's fast. Ready, go. Boom. Throw. Boom, throw, boom, throw, boom, throw, okay? That's it. And then C is just running, running a fly pattern, running a fly pattern. They're just move, they're just running straight. So if this doesn't work out, they can go over the top there, okay? Cool. Number seven. Ooh, seven and eight are very similar, okay? But you do have that run pass option, meaning you're gonna get the ball as the quarterback and you're gonna hand it immediately. I mean, it's like immediately to that beat. Now, if you have a quarterback who is mobile and you have like, they could either like burn it up the field or they can bomb it, or they have really incredible accuracy, and you could have like your running back be the quarterback for that, hand it off to them really quick, and then that basically is now the quarterback, and they can run if they want to, or so I've got a running back, and then I've got the quarterback, who actually is B, 
who's really good. They can run or they can throw it, either one. I would have them right next to each other right up here. Ready, go. I get the ball as the running back or, you know, the person who's okay at, at throwing. And I hand it right over to that quarterback slash running back. Now they can run, they're beat. They can run now or they can throw it. So that's the point here. An RPO is really giving your like most athletic quarterback the opportunity to now be able to run because we can't do quarterback sneaks in NFL flat. Finger length apart. You be a little closer if they want. Ready, go. I get it. Boom. I immediately hand it off. Okay. My number seven. I immediately hand it off. And now B can do a nice run, a sweep, and go. Or they can, if they see an opportunity before they get to the line of scrimmage, okay, they can throw it. B can now throw it because the handoff. Handoff has happened. Now I can run or I can throw it. So that means that on number seven, A, the center, and C need to actively try to get open, right? C needs to do that post pattern like it, like their life dependent on it because it open, B, instead of running and doing this sweep, they could stop, throw that post. Same thing with the others, okay? Very important. All right, and then number eight, very similar. Let me show it to you. For number eight, you have a misdirection type of situation. As I get the ball as the quarterback, I can hand it off here to B, and B's gonna run as if they're going this way, right? It's a misdirection. So I start heading this way as B, but then I cut it back, right? So I grab it this way, but then I cut it back, and I can either and I can either run or I can pass. Now the reason I put it going this way and then I cut back is because C is gonna be doing this slant and go pattern. That's what C is doing. You see C right there? They're gonna go slant, right? So they're gonna do a quick slant and then they're gonna go up, right? So it's quick slant and then they're going up. And so they're probably gonna be wide open up the field. So here's B. B standing right here. I get the ball, I hand it to B. B gets it, they start running this way. The defenders see me going that way. I pop, I go this way. Right, that's what that little, you know, little curve is. I go this way, I see C now down the field, boom. If they're not open, <clears throat> I go, and now I can grab the sideline, right? So that is how I break down my plays one by one. Right, so the time that we have spent together is what I do with all of my players, and then we just do it over and over and over. And what I do is I build progressions, and progressions help us so that they don't have to learn all these, you know, 20 different formations. We've got about four formations, and then they just do different things within that same formation. Now that you have the fundamental knowledge of how these plays work and you see how effective they are, now you can grab either the full playbook that comes with 120 plays and I literally walk you through all of them telling you which ones I like for which age group and why I use them and what are the different formations for and, and that's an exclusive video. Only people who have the full playbook get that or you can grab the age-based. If you're age-based and you're like, you know what, I am coaching second through fifth graders. Okay, cool. We'll grab the all ages playbook bundle and for every age group, you will have 24 plays, right? So this holds eight here, all the way up to 24 plays. 
So with all of the age-based playbooks, I give you 24 plays per age group with eight practice schedules. That means you don't have to sit here and think about what your practice will look like. I've built in all the drills, all the word of the weeks, all of that for you. So that is like, boom, I've done it, all right? Or you can get everything. And what I've done is I've given you a discount off of that and now I've introduced what's called the all-in-one playbook. A lot of times when I talk to coaches, especially new coaches, they're like, man, I just want I just want anything I need to get started so I can have full confidence. And with that all-in-one playbook, you have everything you need. You have templates, you have practice schedules, you have the meet and greet, you have plays, you have it digitally. So you have codes where you can import the plays into the Playmaker app that I use and you can play around with them. So all of that is included with that all-in-one playbook. I'm so excited to have you as part of the Coach D community of coaches where we are learning not only the fundamentals of flag football, but we are making an impact on our community. That's what's most important, teaching the life skills to these kids. That's what we do day in, day out. Now, this is Coach D. If you like what you see, make sure here on YouTube, you subscribe, right? Hit that bell so that you never miss a video. And then of course, you gotta comment. Let me know if you have a question. Let me know how you're loving this. And then give it a thumbs up. Let other coaches know that this was valuable for you. And then finally, we are growing this thing, so I invite you to share. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.